Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about software developer superhero syndrome. This is something that affects people who are just jumping into the game, people who are trying to learn how to become software developers because they've identified rightly that software development is an extremely lucrative opportunity. I don't think there's any other profession out there where in such a short period of time you can go from just starting out to making a lot of money. Now, I call it superhero syndrome because there's some misconceptions out there. The misconception is, well, number one, is that if you take this one $10 tutorial and you copy the code that is, that is presented in that tutorial, you can land a job with full pay as a full-fledged developer right away. This is some expectation. Will I learn React I get? Or will I learn Node? Because I hear that you got to learn Node to be a professional developer and you can make all this money as a Node developer. Some of the best lies, if you will, and I'm not saying people are lying, but some of the best lies are half-truths. So what I said before is half true. Yes, there are high paying jobs in Node and React or whatever is the hot technology of the time. But there's also a huge number of high paying jobs in the not so cutting edge hot technologies of, of the time. So why are, where is the superhero syndrome? The superhero syndrome is that you're gonna do the $10 course or maybe two $10 courses and in a month you're gonna land uh, the $100,000 a year job. This doesn't make any sense if you put any critical thought into it. it feels good, sounds good, but is it true? No. The key to being a great and high paying software developer is to get your foot into the door as quickly as possible and you're going to start off as an entry level developer. So for example, I like to use boxing as an analogy because I used to box. And uh, so if I was teaching somebody out of box, I would teach them the fundamentals and the basics, make sure they had that down pat, and then I want to get them into the ring sparring with reasonable opponents, people that they can handle, not Mike Tyson. When you're first learning how to box, the first guy you don't want to step in the ring with is Mike Tyson, at least not in a sparring match. You have the same thing with coding. With coding, you can't expect to go from zero, do a $20 tutorial, and then you're building the next Instagram. It doesn't work that way. You have to slowly, step by step, build your way up to that level. And the great thing about coding is you can do that while you get paid. So you're probably asking, who's, who's going to pay me? What special school is going to pay me to train? Well, it's called a job. That's, or it's called a freelance client. The key to getting into the workforce as quickly as possible is not certifications, not degrees. It's actually just practical work. It's that simple. In my mentoring group, links below, in my mentoring group, I get people up and running as quickly as possible with, with what I consider to be the key fundamentals, leveraging based on my couple of decades of experience as a developer. You get those key fundamentals, so you understand software develop, development and coding in general, and then that will get you into the, uh, get your foot in the door so you can start landing at least those first entry level jobs. Now, the entry level jobs are exactly that. They're entry level in that you start off with a lower salary than normal. Now, with a few months of experience, maybe three, six, maybe a year, depending on your situation, depending how good you are, depending on your employer, then you'll see your pay begin to rise quite steeply. I've done videos on this in the past where I've shown that after a few years, everybody, regardless of the language, whether you're doing Python or Java or C Sharp or PHP, whether you're going into data sciences in that specialty or AI, on average, they're all making around the same, give or take 5,000 bucks. So again, how much you make as a developer also depends on where you live. If you happen to be living in, uh, I don't know, somewhere in India, the amount of money you make versus somebody living in New York City is gonna to be totally different. Why? Well, partly because the cost of living in New York City is astronomical relative to 
I would imagine what the cost of living is in most cities in India. Or same thing even within the United States. If you are looking for jobs in San Francisco or LA or uh, New York City, the pay is going to reflect that environment, the cost of housing, uh, rentals, or purchasing properties, etc. Versus, say, if you're getting a job and you're living in Ohio, in some small town in Ohio or, or some small town anywhere. So you have to think about that. That being said, with COVID, things are changing now. Things are starting to change in terms of that relationship where people can re work remote. And because they're good, because they got a track record, that's the key, not only tutorials you've, you've done, a track record, then you, uh, you can work at home in a nice area where the cost of living is not high, but still make the big money because you're valuable. So getting back to the superhero syndrome, this is this, again, this concept, this idea by noobs that if they do a couple of courses that are 10 bucks a piece, they'll be able to walk into a company and go, la -dee -da, okay, make me the senior dev. It doesn't work that way. Your goal should be to just get in the door as an entry level so that you can start getting paid to actually learn your craft. Software development is much like any other profession. You really learn the game on the job. There's no question about that. You have to do your fundamental training and your preparation so you know the lay of the land. So in terms of the web, you know the web stack, you understand HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, you understand the DOM, you understand the request response model, you understand the stateless nature of the, of the web, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You understand all these things. You can build basic CRUD-based uh, systems. You can build your basic responsive website. You understand the different options. You understand when PHP might be used versus Python versus Java or C -sharp, C Sharp might be in place. But beyond all the technical skills, which I call the fundamentals, by the way, if you're going to go out there in the real world, you have to also develop soft skills. S-O-F-T, soft skills. Communication skills, good writing skills, good verbal skills, the ability to get along with other people. Another thing you got to learn is how to get a job. Just because you have the skills, somebody got caught writing Ruby code. Cops are after them. Just because you have the coding skills, it doesn't necessarily mean getting a job will be easy. You still need to develop all the soft skills and you need to learn how to go after jobs and sometimes make compromises in that regard. Because of the way people are selling courses online perhaps, and because of the superhero culture that we have now, notice all those superhero movies. It's about somebody who uh, either is born with natural powers way beyond everybody else and they go through some uh, superficial uh, psychological challenges and then they, they save the world they got all these major, amazing powers or on the other hand they're like spider-man they walk around they get bit by a spider and two weeks later they're able to save the world you know most of the superhero movies kind of reinforces this fantasy that you can go from zero to hero with hardly any effort even dr. strange we he, he did some training but you know the way it kind of represents in, in the movie, he did maybe, you know, he, he did maybe, uh, whatever, a few months of training, and then he's like the master magician now, you know, he's the, he's the best ever, even though he's just started out. It doesn't work that way. That whole Doctor Strange story, the, the, the whole training of Doctor Strange, that comes from directly from Eastern martial arts. I, I did the martial arts for decades, and I'm telling you, with martial arts, by the way, I'm telling you, the first three years are the formative years. I say after three years, you're, you get to a competent level, meaning you, can, you have a good understanding of martial arts, you can fight, well, if you're trained properly, and uh, you're, you, you should have the knowledge at that point to be able to teach people, junior people. When you hit about six, seven years, your, your skill sets deepen. When you hit about 10 years, at least from my experience, when you hit about 10 year mark in martial arts, then you start getting a real deep appreciation for it all. You start really understanding what it is to be a good fighter and a good martial artist. Software development's the same way as well. The first three years or so is very formative. You're constantly learning. You're constantly doing new things. Don't get scared. If you train properly in the fundamentals, learning new things is par for the course. It's not a big deal. 
as part of the game. So in the first three to four years as a software developer, you're learning a lot, you're doing different things, you're jumping around, you're getting your, your uh, software developer nerd hands. After that, I think that, again, just like martial arts, from my experience, when I hit about 10 years into it, way back, then I really started to get a deeper understanding of uh, coding. One thing that sort of occurred to me early on was that, especially with the web stack stuff, most of the web stuff, all you're doing is you're taking it in data, you're filtering it, storing it in a database, and then pulling it back out, filtered to present to users, and the whole cycle repeats itself. So when I would look at a project, I would look at the basic requirements. So oh, we need an authentication module, okay, authentication. We need to uh, create the database, okay, database. We need our views. We have special logic here and there we might need. They call it the business rules, if you will. And I would separate my project into these different components like that. And then I would just imagine that the information was like a river. Think of a flowing river of data flowing through the systems, hitting the authentication layer, going into the database, coming back out, presenting to the view, going back into some middle layer that processes data, then back into the database again. So I saw it as a flow. So as a result of that, it made it much easier for me to architect complex systems because I was able to create the components and imagine the flow of information from one component to the next. So I could have systems that are very, very complex, system A here and system B here and system C here, all part of the same software, but you have these subsystems, we'll call them subsystems. Um, and because I understood the flow and I understand the common pool of information was that database allowed, it, allowed me to more easily understand and break down a complex project into something simple. Anyway, you get that with martial arts, believe it or not. So to conclude, yeah, don't fall into the software developer superhero syndrome where you think that doing one or two courses is going to immediately get you a job. It won't. You need to get your fundamentals, and then you need to get your foot in the door, not as the senior dev. You're not going to get in there. You're going to come in there as the trainee junior dev. The good thing is oftentimes you'll be paid to do that job, and that's cool. And in a short period of time, quicker than just about any other profession I know of, that I can actually think of, you find your salary will start here, and then it will go boom, 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 very quickly. But the trick is, is to get your foot in the door as quickly as possible so you can start gaining that real world experience. You don't want to get caught in tutorial hell.